when I'm working with people that are starting their digital marketing journey, the thing that they run into the most that they have problems with is coming up with content ideas. What do I create? What do I create? And I keep explaining that you need to let what's already working be the thing that moves you in the next direction of what to create. So it's, I basically call it following the breadcrumbs. This works on Pinterest. This works on YouTube. This works on uh, your blog analytics. This works on TikTok. It works everywhere. If you would just look at what's already working and double down on that, you're going to be more successful. So I just hit 1.1 million monthly views on this brand new Pinterest account. It's already profitable, it's already making money, and I'm just getting started. So I know the concept of everything I'm doing is working, whether or not it turns into a six-figure income or a four-figure a month or a three-figure, I don't know where it's gonna go. But what I do wanna say, show you is the concepts and how I use Pinterest to guide me to what to create next. And then I'm gonna show you really quick how I create the content using AI. So it's super easy. So what you're looking at now, this is Balan Blogger. This is my digital marketing uh, website that I'm building purely for Pinterest, okay? So it's kind of a, started as like a little test project. Like, let me just see what, what it'll do if I actually follow the breadcrumbs on Pinterest and only build for Pinterest. Now I do have a few of my product review videos from TikTok and whatnot sprinkled in here because I'm also testing those. But for the most part, what you'll see here is these are all kind of like home decor and crafts and holidays and things like that that I'm doing in recipes, all of the Pinterest style image inspiration types of things is what I'm working with. All right. So now how do I follow the breadcrumbs? A couple of ways. So the first thing that I do, so let's just say you do, I always tell everybody, if you're, if as long as you're doing this every day, you need about 90 days of analytics to really be able to follow the breadcrumbs, okay? So 90 days, you're blogging every day, you're using AI, so it's super easy. And then you're gonna start getting some analytics. This is gonna tell you what, what Pinterest thinks you're, blog is about or what it likes or what it's finding that the users like so that you can double down. So we're going to go up here to Pinterest and I'm going to click on analytics. Okay. This is where everybody gets hung up. I'm going to make this really simple for you. Down here, you're going to go to your metrics and what you're looking for is outbound clicks. Now you can measure saves, you can measure impressions, but listen, I want to make money on my blog. So how am I gonna make money on my blog? People have to click through to my blog. They can save my Pinterest images all day long because they love them, but if they're not clicking through to my blog, what point does it serve? So for me, primarily, I'll study impressions if I just wanna get an idea of what art is working, but if I'm really looking for topics, I'm gonna to look at outbound clicks. This is what people are clicking through, okay? So here's an example. This one did really well for me over the holiday season, these Mad Hatter costumes. I made some money every day. People were buying Amazon uh, costumes off Amazon, off my clicks. I was getting ad revenue. Second one is closet ideas. Third one is Christmas crafts. Fourth one, also Christmas crafts. So what is that telling me? Something in there with these crafts is working. That might be something to explore. I scroll down a little bit more. What else is working? Blue bedroom ideas. I've got, oh, there's another blue bedroom ideas. There's another blue bedroom ideas. What is that telling me? Definitely blue bedroom ideas is working. It's over and over and over again, okay? So maybe we wanna play with that a little bit. So what I would do, this is where I'm gonna bring in a software that I pay for to show you how this works. So let's just pretend I'm gonna take this pin right here. Uh, let's do this one. 25 blue bedroom ideas. I'm gonna open that pin real quick. Now what I'm gonna do, this pin, every pin on Pinterest has a unique website address, a URL. So up here, pinterest.com slash pin and then the pin number. That's the actual web address of this pin. Now I'm gonna go into pin click. So this is a software I pay for. I put a link in the description below and I'm gonna go right here to pin stats. This is actually my favorite use of this tool so far. I'm gonna paste in pin stats and it's gonna pull up my pin. Now watch what happens. When I hover over this, it tells me, um, let me shrink that down just a little bit so we can see it better. 
it tells me what interests this pin has. These are annotated interests that Pinterest has added based on what is in the visual, okay? It doesn't mean each one of those have boards, but this, this does mean this would be something people are searching. Maybe they're underserved, or maybe it's just another topic idea to put on the same board. So for example, white and blue guest bedroom. I haven't done anything with that. I would have never even thought of that. I'm just doing blue bedrooms. But here it's saying white and blue guest bedroom is a thing. Now, if we hover over this little question mark, pin click says these are keywords generated by Pinterest after they analyze the image, pin title, description, and the content. These keywords are pulled directly from Pinterest human curated keyword database. These are important keywords to consider using as well if you're creating a similar pin. So it could just be that we make another pin about the blue bedrooms and maybe we just retitle it white and blue guest bedroom. Or maybe we just add that to the blog to be a separate section. Or maybe it's worth creating a whole new topic about. You get to decide. So how would I know? All right, let me go look at this a little bit. So I'm going to go over to Pinterest for a minute. Now I could use the keyword, I could still use pin clicks for keyword research, but I'm going to kind of poke around here. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say white and blue guest bedroom. Let me see what's on there already. Blue bedroom decor ideas, coastal bedroom. Okay, so not blue and white bedroom ideas. All right, so here's the really quick inspiration I'm getting from this. I'm seeing two things. I'm seeing guest bedroom ideas on some of these pins. Now, I'm a quick study. I, I know this, so I'm looking at this really quickly. You might need to spend a little bit more time here. But what I'm seeing is guest bedroom ideas, and I'm seeing blue and white bedroom ideas, neither of which have I covered yet. I did do coastal bedroom, but if you have not done coastal bedroom, that would be another one that's popping up here for ideas. Then I look up here at the top, white and blue guest bedroom ideas. Hmm. So that looks like it could be a whole board potentially in itself. We have um, other, okay, so let me look and see blue bedroom decor ideas, blue bedroom decor ideas, light blue bedroom ideas, blue and white bedroom ideas. Now here's kind of like my next step of, of where I get inspiration. I don't know if you know this, if you've ever used Pinterest, but watch what happens. If I wanna go save this to a board and I click on this little arrow right here, it'll pull up my own boards as ideas. But if I go to create board, I could say, whoops, it's not doing it, hold on. Let me scroll down. What I'm looking for is blue and there it goes, suggestions. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. So let me do that again. Right here, click on the little arrow, start typing in what you think that pin is about, blue and white bedroom ideas. So I click there and I'm just gonna start typing blue and white. Now Pinterest starts suggesting boards based on its own board. So I don't have a board yet called blue white bedroom. So even though it doesn't have the guest room part in it, like the pin clicks annotated interest, a blog about blue and white guest bedrooms would fit on here. A blog about blue and white bedrooms would fit on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create that. Or I could keep going down and say, is there blue and white guest bedroom? No, so they're not really suggesting that as a board. So to me, I probably wouldn't just make a blue and white guest bedroom board, but I would do blue white bedroom. And now I'm gonna go create an article called blue and white bedroom ideas, okay? Then I'll look up guest bedroom. So how would I do this? I'm gonna go over here to my favorite AI writing tool. And there's a link below in the description. And I'm gonna type in blue and white bedroom as my primary keyboard. I'm gonna click generate a title and it's gonna give me a title, Serene Blue and White Bedroom Ideas for Cozy Living, and I'm gonna click on Balan Blogger. Now, what I just proved to you is how I double down on following the breadcrumbs. 
We know that blue bedrooms were working for me over and over and over again. So how do I double down? I found a blue and white bedroom. That, that also will fit into that blue bedroom style. And my, my coastal bedroom will fit on this board. I, there's lots of things I can do. So blue and white bedroom, I want to at least have that article. I've already got my template all set up. This AI writing tool is going to write the blog. It's going to create AI images, although they're, they're kind of okay. I do have another image generator I tend to go behind with and add more images later once the blog is getting traffic. But it's going to write the blog. Based on my template, it's going to add AI images. It's going to add a YouTube video. It's going to add tables, conclusions, H3s, lists, quotes, italics, whatever it is that I want. And because I linked my WordPress blog to this, it already knows what category to put it in. It's going to publish it for me. Literally, all this is going to happen behind the scenes while I move on to something else. So we're going to click run and we're going to let it write this and we're going to come back in a second. Now, the other idea we had, remember, was guest bedroom. So I'm going to start without the blue for a second because I haven't done anything with guest bedrooms. I'm going to kind of explore this for a second. Guest bedroom. Now, look at what's popping up. Guest bedroom, modern bedding. Look, a lot of blue. Blue and cream bedrooms. All right. Now, if I want to dive deeper into this, I'm going to go back over here to pin clicks. Watch this. I'm going to go to keyword research and I'm going to type in guest bedroom. This is going to move that little search we were just doing manually on Pinterest faster. It's going to give us better details and more of a snapshot. So sorting this by popularity down, here's the topics. Guest bedroom ideas, guest bedroom and office combo. I never would have thought of that. Guest bedroom basket ideas, guest bedroom colors. There's our blue and white. That's a board we could put our blue and white on. Guest bedroom essentials, guest bedroom furniture inspiration. So you guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go create, since we know bedroom is working for me, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe I want to do that one. I don't even know what it is. I have to go look. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, these are still all different subtopics. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I have 20, just a quick snapshot. I have 20, 30, 40 blog topics all related to guest bedroom right here. And all I have to do is pick one. All right, so I, let's start. I would start with the main one and work my way down. Guest bedroom ideas. Go over here to the builder, type in create new, one click blog post, guest bedroom ideas, generate a title, cozy best, cozy guest bedroom ideas for welcoming stay. Click Balan blogger, I'm gonna run it. Now, our blue and white bedroom one is done. Let's go see what that looks like. So it's already published to Balan blog, blogger. It publishes it in schedule mode. Here, let me just add, log in really quick. So now I'm just in my all post. And as you can see, all of these scheduled ones are ones that just got written today or yesterday and they're scheduled to go out now. They're going to all hit like today, tomorrow. You can see here, this one goes today at four. This one goes today at 3.30. This one goes at 3.23. So it's not just one explosive post, you know, publish at one moment. So let's go look at it. So if I were just to look at this, blog really quick. Let me click edit so we can see what it looks like in draft form. And then right here, I'm going to show you what it looks like in preview form as well. Actually, we'll just publish it. Okay. So look what it did. Title. Here's the blog. It put in a video. It's got headings. It's got subheadings. <laughs> see what I mean about the image? Those pillows are floating. So I might want to go back and correct that one. It's not perfect. This one's pretty darn good. Not bad. My other AI image editor is better. But here's how I use this. I say this every time. Done is better than perfect. I will say that again. Done is better than perfect. Publish the post. Make a pin. I'm going to show you how to make the pin in a second. Make the pin. Forget about it. Move on. The minute you start getting clicks to the blog, you go in and make it better. That is my 
process because you are going to create a lot of blog posts and a lot of pins that never go anywhere. Why worry about making them perfect if nobody's going to see them? That is my opinion. The featured blog photo looks good enough, okay? And it has links. So at quick glance, the only one that's weird to me is the one with the floating pillows. Maybe I just delete that. I'll just get it out of there for now. Everything else looks fine. Okay, we're good to go, right? So now we're gonna publish this. I'm gonna go to post and it's already got the excerpt for me. It's scheduled, but I am just gonna change this public right here today at four and I'm just gonna say now and then we're gonna hit save. That way I can show you how I make the pin really quick to put on Pinterest. So we're gonna go to view post. All right, here we go. Post is done. I mean, guys, this, this helps you move so fast through this process. So how do I monetize this? I monetize this with ad revenue and I monetize this with affiliate links, which you can see on all of my other videos, how I add the affiliate links after the fact. Let's make the pin. Up here, I have a Chrome extension called Harpa. It's free, but then it goes to paid. Now, if you want all my chat GPT prompts, I have a group coaching program that you can join. We have one group call a month. We have one formal training a month. You have access to all of my courses, all of my chat GPT prompts, links to all the resources, the frequently asked questions, the tutorial videos, it's all listed below. But right here, I have this little preset little GPT, this little um, command, if you will, for those of you that don't understand that language. And so my prompt is saved. Watch what it does. It's going to create an image prompt for my AI image editor. It is also going to give me a set of Pinterest titles and descriptions that I can use for Pinterest. This is all from one prompt that I saved in my, in my little editor, which is powered by ChatGPT. So watch this. I'm just going to take this little image. Now you can put in your color codes, your style of your website so that it makes a similar branding every time. So like my Vegas site, it actually creates all these like everything is neon and dice and it's got it all pre-programmed in. These are not my photos. This is just preset from this, from other people that are sharing their photos. So I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to choose a 9 by 16, which is a Pinterest style image, and I'm going to click generate. Now on the bottom, what you can see here is it is generating four images for me. Out of these four images, I may only get one that I can use. I may get two. I may get three. I may be able to use all four. We'll see. But this is my starting point is at least one image to create the blog. All right, so let's take a look at what it created for us. Ooh, not bad. Serene bedroom ideas. That one's usable. The URL is correct. Perfect. What's the next one? This is way better, except they got my URL wrong down there. See that? So I could either cut that off and just do a screenshot of that or run it again. So I like this one better with the blues and the pinks. What's the next one? Serene bedroom ideas. Balan blogger. This is my favorite so far and it works. It's got my URL. How about this one? Serene bedroom ideas. That one works. So I got three out of four that I could use. So what would I do now? I would take the one I want to use. Click on those three dots, download it, and I'm going to get, call it Serene Bedroom Ideas. Got it? Now, what is the next step that I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Pinterest, and I'm going to go to create a pin. I'm going to browse for that pin. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to create pin, browse for the pin stream bedroom ideas. Now, if, if you remember, our prompt already created all of our titles and descriptions. So I literally could take three of those pins, put them on Pinterest and schedule them out with different titles and different descriptions. That's the goal of this. Sorry, that just disappears every now and then. Then I'm going to paste that right in the box. I'm going to go back to my blog URL, grab that and I'm gonna put it here. What board do I wanna put this on? Oh, what board do I wanna put this on? Do we have a guest bedroom? I don't think we did yet, right? Unless we created one, no. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna create a board, guest 
bedroom ideas. Now later, I'll be able to repin this pin to blue bedroom ideas, feminine bedroom ideas, girls' bedrooms, wherever I'm gonna repin later. If you don't understand repinning, don't worry about that right now. What I'm telling you is you'll have lots of opportunity later to put it on other boards in your Pinterest account. Tagged topics, these are Pinterest annotated interests. They're tagged topics. So let's see if it has guest bedroom. It's not really the annotated interest, but it's tags, it's, it's categories, so to speak. So guest bedroom, do they have blue guest bedroom on here? No, but blue bedroom they do. You could put that. Maybe you wanna put it in the feminine bedrooms. So the feminine style, you know, you can put it in multiple tagged topics to kind of guide Pinterest to tell it what your pin is about. Now, I don't even know how much of that's necessary anymore. The way AI has gotten so good, they can tell what our picture is about. They're reading the title. Title definitely matters. I've tested that. Description definitely matters. I've tested that. The image definitely matters. The text overlay matters. In fact, this probably would have been better if I would have changed that from serene bedroom ideas and I should have, I should have changed serene to guest bedroom ideas. How would I do that? Go back to ideagram. Go, go look at what's in your quotes, serene bedroom ideas, and I would change that to guest bedroom ideas. Since my target really is the keyword guest bedroom ideas, it would just be a better idea to make sure that that specific target keyword is on that pin. Doesn't mean I still can't use this. I can still do what I'm doing, but I probably wanna go in here and grab one that says guest bedroom idea and schedule that out for a week from now or something like that so that I'm still targeting that keyword. Ooh, that one came out nice. I like that one, the URL is good. So I'll just save this and then I'll schedule it to go a week later so I'm not pinning a bunch of the same URL on the same board on the same day. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hit publish and we're good to go. So there is an example of how you follow the breadcrumbs. I'm Lori Ballin, love to have you in the coaching group. All the links are below and thanks for watching today.